KCOD Broadcasting weaves the listening environments of 99.9 WQRC, Ocean 104.7, WFCC Classical 107.5, Cape Country 104, and KCOD.com's website experience to reflect the lifestyles of the people who live, work, and play on Cape Cod. We hope that you enjoy this podcast. I'm Matt McCarthy, and you're listening to Sunday Journal. Cape Cod Children's Place has been helping families and children on the Cape for two decades. We'll be talking about this morning and also how they're helping local dads. I'm joined by Cindy Horgan, the executive director of Cape Cod Children's Place, and Paul Melville. He's a family support specialist. And thank you so much for coming in and joining us today on Sunday Journal. Our Good pleasure, morning. Matt. So uh, just a little bit overall for, for our listeners who, who may not be familiar uh, with your organization, Cape Cod Children's Place is a family resource center. Just wondering if you could talk a, a little bit uh, about your organization and, and what you do and how you help families and children on the Cape. Oh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, Cape Cod Children's Place, we're just beginning. We're in our 20th year. We are a nonprofit, and we are our location is at um, 10 Balwick in Northeast Tim, 10 Balwick Road. However, we are a part of the communities of the Lower and Outer Cape, so Howard, Chatham, Booster, all the way down to Provincetown, so eight towns. However, that being said, our work really is um, sort of seeps into all of Cape Cod and really southeast of Massachusetts. We not only provide really education and care to the families down there, but we also do resource and referral and parent support throughout those communities, and we do it in whatever way a family needs. So sometimes we do parent education workshops, home visits, phone support, one-on-one consultation. Um, however we can do it, we do it. You mentioned a lot of things there, and we'll get really in-depth into a lot of them, but you've been around for 20 years, and yes. since you're the executive director. How long have you been uh, with the organization, and how have you seen it grow over the last, uh, well, obviously, 20 years, but I'm not sure if you've been there the whole time. No, I'm in my 11th year, and I'm in, in my second year as, as the executive director. I actually came on board as the family support coordinator. It had um, had a start with a wonderful woman that's well known down there named Charlotte Fife and she really started that work and then we got a really great grant from the Children's Trust out of Boston and it allowed us to really become the family support um, portion of the agency that we are and so I came on board 11 years ago and it, and I was given the privilege of just letting that program grow and it's a really a response to what the community is needed. And Paul Melville you're a family support specialist uh, with the Cape Cod Children's Place wondering if you could talk a little bit about your role. Well I, I work in uh, I wear a lot of hats Matt in, uh, in this uh, jack of all trades. Yeah uh, so um, I'm uh, it's my great privilege to do uh, as much work as I do with the Cape Cod Children's Place and um, with Cindy Horgan. But um, I also um, am at um, Cape Cod Child Development, um, where for you know, eight years now I've been a family support specialist. That organization serves um, also the you know the, the whole Cape. They do uh, many of the Head Start and preschool classrooms, all the early intervention on the Cape and Islands, um, the teen parenting program, and they do um, what we call a, a CFCE, um, a um, it's the fun program, the Families United Network program, supporting families in DY and um, Barnstable, all seven villages of Barnstable. I connect families to resources. I connect um, resource providers to each other. I facilitate groups um, and uh, teach classes for for parents. There are so many programs that we can get into, and and we'll have a lot of time to do that over the course of this segment. But one of the the, the program that I wanted to start with is the Lower Cape Dads Talk that's coming up on April 1st. Wondering if you could talk a little bit uh, about that. Can I share some history to that? Because I think it really is valuable when we talk about dads. Actually, the, we started out uh, probably nine years ago with what we had women coming together saying we need a place to talk and we called it a single moms group and we started to bring these moms together and it, it really had um, a wonderful response and it did a lot for the community. Some of us in the community recognize that our dads deserved the same opportunity. And a wonderful woman, Mary Wilson from Cape Cod Child Development, she and I sat together and put our brains together. And at that point, we had the opportunity to invite Paul and then to say, let's do this for dads. And Paul, we handed the baton to Paul, and that's where it went to. But it it started really recognizing what um, parents needed, and we were excluding dads, and that wasn't okay. You know, Paul, the the focus on... On dads, what do you hear from them in, in these sessions? I know you're, you're obviously very involved, very hands on. As, as Cindy was just saying, you know, you hear a lot about you know the needs of moms, and, and you know, not to take anything away from that at all. But what have you heard from dads as you've done these sessions? Dads love being parents.
parents, and they um, they love having that role um, be um, respected, and they they struggle in society because they're not uh, necessarily expected to play that role, and uh, they're looked at as oh you're you're babysitting the kids today, or oh it's mom's day off. Uh, and that's that's not the reality for a lot of dads. They're their parents. They 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 happen to be a different gender than mom. Um, in in some families, dad plays the the primary role. In some families, dad's the only parent. Um, and this gives them a place where they can uh, talk about that. They can talk about what they're proud of, what what is working for them. They can talk about their struggles with other dads. And they're not they're not in a position where they're they're competing gender wise, or they have to feel like well they're going to be wrong because there's a you know, a, a, an expert by virtue of her gender in the room that <laughs> that is um, going to be telling them how they should be parenting. You'd mentioned single dads, but this talk is is for all dads. It's not just single dads, correct? Correct. Yes, the dads dads talk meets the first Wednesday each month in Harwich at the community center from six to eight and uh, six to seven thirty. I'm sorry, and it's uh, it's open to all dads, and it's been a, a great collaboration between um, numerous organizations. The Cape Cod Children's Place has been at the forefront from the very beginning in in uh, 2008 when we first started. This group. And can I share another observation Absolutely. which has come from this? Um, it's about relationship, and that's what Paul's had an opportunity to create with these men, these fathers. But what has also happened in a wonderful way, and which we really as a community need to really do more of, is it has allowed fathers to step forward in leadership roles. Um, there's been times that Paul has been unable to hold the meeting, and he struggled with, what do I do? What do I do? And the wonderful thing is there have been um, participants that said, I will take it. And that is a wonderful part of sort of pushing this movement forward and really having fathers spread it, make it deeper in the communities. I'm Matt McCarthy. You're listening to Sunday Journal. I'm joined this morning by Cindy Horgan. She's the executive director of Cape Cod Children's Place and also Paul Melville, a family support specialist. We're talking about the organization as a whole, but we're also focusing on their Lower Capes Dads talks and how the organization is helping dads. You know, the role of dad has changed quite a bit over the years. And, and Paul, you talked about this a little bit. You know, we're not living in the world of Mad Men anymore. No. You know, we, we've seen we've seen the program. The roles have have changed quite a bit. What have you heard from men who may have been raised with a, a kind of a different approach, maybe a more hands off dad, who are now you know trying to be more of a hands on dad? Maybe they are a single dad. What have you heard from men who who maybe have been you know raised in in, in a different era, and, and now things are changing? Well, they lacked role models. They you know they they now are very aware that that nobody showed. Them them how to do it. They, they have a sense of what they want to do, but the, they don't know how to do it. And so they sort of become um, role models for each other. They look to to uh, dads in the community that are, that are doing it. Um, we're even seeing grandparents now, my dad included, uh, up in, you know, in his 70s, uh, certainly changed many more diapers uh, as a grandfather than he ever did as a, as a dad. <laughs> it's, it's, it's changing, and I think for the better. One of the, um, I call it the GPS um, culture, and one of the greatest things that happened for men, and I make light of this, but it's true, the GPS was invented, and they no longer <laughs> had to struggle with asking for directions. Yes, a, a, a big-time struggle <laughs> for men, I will say that. So one of the wonderful things that I think that I'm seeing in from this real initiative is that men are recognizing that it is okay to ask for help, for support, and for very a very long time they lived really in a place of isolation. Um, there were many men for generations, if we go back and, and ask, that maybe were a single dad at home with children um, and how um, isolating that was. I think one of the biggest things that I get from the dads, I'm not in the dad's talk group, but I run the other dad programs on the cape is that they found out it was okay to ask for help and it was actually a sign of strength in their family design and i think that that is really an incredibly important part of what's happening now for fathers that they're not alone and it's okay and you know not to look at this in a huge macro sense you know which would be very possible with a conversation like this but it's safe to say that it is changing for men i look at my generation and and i would share that observation as well that that maybe men are a little more okay with asking for help and maybe dads are a little more okay with talking about, you know, the challenges that, that they're presented with, you know, be it in, in any situation. So I, I think that's probably a fair assessment. W- would you agree with that, Paul? I would absolutely, Matt. Now, you know, for parents of, of young kids, for dads of young kids, how important is it, you know, for the support that, that you can provide? How important is it for families? Oh, it's critical. 
It's, it, lots of um, really significant studies now uh, prove what we've sort of suspected for a while, that children do much better in just about every measurable way when they have uh, a dad involved in a, you know, in a safe and nurturing way. And um, they, dads can't be involved if they aren't supported and if it's not okay for them to be involved and if the media doesn't reflect that they ought to be involved and, and capable. And so our, our, making, um, our supporting dads, making it safe, giving them a place to talk, connecting them to resources, uh, and, and normalizing, destigmatizing that um, nurturing father role is, is huge. You mentioned the word stigma there. There has been for years, I think it would be a fair observation, that you know, dads are, are more supposed to be you know, at work, not as involved with the kids. And it, has that been a, a tremendous challenge you know, for, for you to, to sit there with these dads and, and, you know, and work on that with them, that they, it's okay, it's more than, in fact, it's great for them to, to truly be involved and to truly be hands-on? Yes. I don't have to convince too many of them. There, there are um, certainly dads who have grown up in that culture um, but um, I think dads get it. What the concern is, th- um, society doesn't get it. So they feel they f- the dads that that come to me know this is what they want to do. They know they're right for the most part, but they they feel judged by either family or friends or coworkers or the media. Or, you know, when, when was the last time you saw a, a pro? Dad, um, you know, on a sitcom that you know a sitcom that, that wasn't True. making dad out to be a doofus or, or incompetent <laughs> somehow, and mom needed to come in and, and rescue the family from Homer from and Marge dad. Simpson, right? Mm. Exactly. So, you know, and, and of course, I would say it's probably safe to say that parenting is the most important job of all, right? And I, I like most to think important so. Important and most difficult, <laughs> and there's no retirement plan. Um, it is a it's a lifetime journey. And I think that one of the things that Paul and I work really hard together, we do a lot of wonderful work together, but one of them is really recognizing and acknowledging that there's a lot of um, visible and and invisible obstacles to dads being in their children's lives. We know what the data tells us. We know the value of it. We know dads desire to be in their children's lives. And yet there's a lot of sort of um, just sort of ways that we do things that keep dad uh, an arm's length away. And we often spend a lot of energy helping dads to say, it's, that's not okay. I want to be a part of this. And um, from having them come into school meetings and sit in little chairs with their knees touching their ears and, you know, feeling awkward in that position, but recognizing that they have a voice and that their children really are counting on them. I'm Matt McCarthy. You're listening to Sunday Journal. I'm joined this morning by Cindy Horgan, the executive director of Cape Cod Children's Place, San Paul Melville, a family support specialist. We've been talking a lot about how the organization is working with dads uh, in the local community, but also you know, I wanted to expand this, you know, to, to be on more than that. You offer so many different types of programs, so many different types of uh, support structures for families, moms, and dads. I know you work a lot with moms and kids. Wondering if you could talk a little bit about some of the programs you have for uh, for people other than dads, since we've given them so much love uh, this morning. <laughs> well, the other piece of Cape Cod Children's Place, the um, play groups that or that Paul referenced from the fund program on that lower Cape, Cape Cod Children's Place is the CFCE down there. So play group story hours, all of those programs are throughout the community. The other thing that we are working hard to do is create, and a lot of times we get a little pushback from this, but we create dad-centered activities. So for example, in the month of March, we're going to have a dad spend a day using what we call STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. And we're also putting an A in there. So it's actually STEAM because we're going to put some art for a dad to show how how to play with science with your children from how balls go down the tunnel and, and all of that. And it's really geared towards fathers and their children or significant father figures in children's lives. So we know that dads um, not always are the biological father, but they may have a significant role in a child's life. And so we are working hard to create more of those opportunities. Um, when I first started father work, probably about... 14 years ago, for some reason we thought that going in and and doing an arts and crafts activity was going to be really well um, received, and that went south very quickly. Hmm. And we realized that moving our bodies and hands-on and doing that kind of activity is what dads really enjoyed. And we also saw dads are so good at playing with their children. And so we work really hard in the community to make sure every play group that exists has a really good feeling for a dad to enter it. 
I know you have a program coming up that you're very excited about called Parenting Journey for Fathers. Paul, you were uh, expressing to me earlier how excited you were about this. Wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. Sure. This is going to be great, Matt. The um, Parenting Journey for Fathers has not been offered on Cape Cod before. It's a 12-week um program we meet one Wednesday night uh, each you know Wednesday night each week and um, we feed the dads and we really um, Cindy and I are going to spend a lot of time in small groups with the dads helping them look at how they were parented um, what that process of growing up was like and then taking from that good and bad um, who do they want to be as parents to their children now? It's really a power. We've each been through the program, and it's a, it's really a powerful program. It, is that when you said, what type of parent do you want to be? I think we've all heard our parents, and I think at some point in our lives, we've all said, boy, I'm not going to do it like my mom or <laughs> right. dad. Is that a challenge that you find almost every parent has? It's universal. Trying yes. to find People's, out who yes. they are as a parent. Yeah. And yeah. some people know who they want to be, and they still find themselves being the the, the um who their parent was because that that was their role model that's what they learned it it it, it takes some work to really to change the gears and i think it's really important that paul and i have come to realize that every parent does the best they can with what they have we're in a new generation when we have an opportunity to support through programs like this you know it's funny you would think that saying well i'm going to be like this or i'm going to be like that as a parent but putting it into practice a is a completely thing. different thing, right? Yeah. Yes. I, I, and I would imagine that you would hear that from pretty much every person you work with, right? Absolutely. And and we and we say it, you know, we we deal with this ourselves as parents, you know. Um, and it's also uh, Cindy alluded to. It, it's I think important to know in all of our classes and our groups, there's no judgment. We really we we believe that. Everyone sets out to be the, a, a good parent. Everyone wants to be and, and is the best parent they can be with what they know and what they have. We're not, we're not judging our parents who may have done it differently. They did the best they could with what they knew and what they had. And uh, that, that's true of the parents who walk into our groups. Well, unfortunately, we're just about out of time here on Sunday Journal. I'd like to thank Cindy Horgan, the executive director of Cape Cod Children's Place, and Paul Melville, a family support specialist uh, also working with the organization, for joining us uh, to talk about everything you have going on. And thanks again for coming in here on Sunday Journal. Thank you. I'm Matt McCarthy. This is Sunday Journal. This podcast is a presentation of Cape Cod Broadcasting, which is solely responsible for its content. Thank you for listening. For more information, please visit us at capecodbroadcasting.com.